Okay. Now we get to the discussions of catastrophe because we're going to talk about will future man-made warming be substantial. And we get to uh, one of my favorite topics, which are the dreaded climate models. Uh, as most of you have seen in the press, climate models seem to be predicting all kinds of Armageddon for the world, anything from three degrees of warming over the next 100 years to 10 or 20 degrees of warming, and rising oceans and melting ice and all kinds of other things, droughts and floods and, and plagues and disease. And so we're going to take a look at these and see if their assumptions are reasonable. And one of the things we're going to find, which I want to lay out now and I'll get back to, but one of the interesting things is the catastrophe in these climate models actually don't come from the theory of greenhouse gas global warming. In fact, alone, greenhouse gas global warming theory does not get a catastrophe. It requires a second theory that the world is dominated by positive feedback, and we'll get to that in a second, to get to the catastrophe, which is one of the reasons why alarmists are, are disingenuous when they say the science is settled. Because the science is, in fact, fairly settled that CO2 can have some kind of greenhouse gas effect. But it's also fairly settled that that effect is likely to be small and non-catastrophic. And in fact, the catastrophe and the need for drastic action on CO2 all flows from the second theory, which no one ever talks about, and which is far from settled. And so let's get into it. We're going to use this chart for several pages, so I need to set it up. On the left, you're going to have a temperature increase in degrees Celsius. On the bottom, you have different atmospheric CO2 levels. Currently, we're right around 380, 385 parts per million, so that's why that line today is drawn from 385 parts per million. And if, as I said before, the actual base theory of greenhouse gas warming from CO2 shows only modest warming from CO2 acting alone. And that's what you see in the blue line. And this isn't some skeptic's fantasy. This actually comes right from the last IPCC report. That's where that equation comes. And the blue line is the graph of that equation that was in the last IPCC report. And what it shows is for approximate doubling of atmospheric CO2 over the next century, we might expect a degree Celsius of warming around the world. Something that might be better to avoid or it might not, but it certainly is probably not catastrophic. And it's certainly well below the forecast of doom we get every place else. Even this line, I think a lot of skeptics think is a little high, but uh, we won't argue about it here because a more important issue is coming when we talk about a separate theory of the Earth being dominated by positive feedback. So let's see, how do we get from this relatively modest warming forecast to more catastrophic ones? And you can see that here. The, what happens is scientists apply in these models something called positive feedback. Scientists in most of these models to get catastrophic forecasts are assuming what are really staggering levels of feedback if one has any experience with natural processes from 60 to 80 or 90 percent uh, feedback numbers. And you can see the different forecasts result from these different feedback numbers uh, overlaid onto our original forecast. Just to be clear on positive ne negative feedback, negative feedback is like a ball sitting in the bottom of a trough. Um, if you tap that ball, it's going to pretty much oscillate around but eventually return to where it started. It's not going to go very far away. An example of negative feedback in the climate would be if uh, the world heated up and vaporized more water out of the oceans. That vaporized water might form clouds. The clouds might block some sunlight and in turn create some cooling that offsets some of the warming. Positive feedback is a ball sitting on the tip top of the mountain. If you just give it the lightest tap, that ball is going to roll a long way away and it's never going to end up back at its starting point. It's going to end up miles and miles away. This is sort of the tipping point effect people talk about in terms of the climate. And an example might be if the world warmed, more ice would melt. Uh, ice cover and snow and ice on the ground is reflective. It, it sends light and heat back into space. And so if it's gone, the world might heat up more, and so warming would get more warming. To assume these tipping points or these very high positive feedbacks, they have to assume that the, the climate is really dominated by positive feedback. And I can tell you from a natural scientist standpoint that this is an extraordinarily unusual assumption for a long-term stable natural process like climate. Because most natural systems that are dominated by a tipping point 
in the five or six billion history, year history of the Earth would have run away already. If there was a tipping point, we would have already found it, and it would have been the, the climate would already be at some extreme, and it's not. It's been stable, oscillating around a stable point for millions of years, much like the ball sitting in the bottom of this trough. But there's another way we can reality check that. We can go back to these individual forecasts, remember these feedback forecasts, and remember they begin at, I've zeroed everything out so that they start at how much warming would we see from today at 385 parts per million. But we have a temperature history over the last 100 years going back to when pre-industrial CO2 was something like 270 parts per million. So we can actually take these same equations backwards. And in fact, these models should be just as valid going backwards as they are forwards. There's nothing about the time before today that's any different than the time after today in terms of how natural processes should work. So let's project them backwards like this. You can see that if these forecasts are applied against history, they predict enormous amounts of warming should have occurred over the last 100 years. And we already know that not to be the case. We know at most, and we think this number might be exaggerated, we know that at most six-tenths of a degree C uh, of warming has occurred over the last 100 years. And in fact, some of that is most likely due to the sun and other natural variations. So the actual number due to CO2, which is what these lines are forecasting, should be less than six-tenths of a degree. Well, none of these feedback cases are consistent with that. In fact, even the zero feedback case probably overstates past warming. And so there's a real problem in that history isn't consistent with, the, with these catastrophic forecasts. And so it really has to uh, make us doubt whether or not we will actually see them in the future. But there's another way to test them because people have been making forecasts with these catastrophic models for 20 years. In fact, James Hansen, climate scientist, fairly famous one at NASA and friend of Al Gore and making the movie, stood up almost 20 years ago today in June of 1988 in front of Congress and made a series of forecasts. And this is using his scenario A. I choose that one. He gave several scenarios. But this is the scenario that most closely matches uh, the actual CO2 uh, history in the last 20 years, how much, history, how much CO2 we've actually seen. In fact, his scenario A actually understates the amount of CO2 production over the last 20 years. So this is the best forecast to use. And you can see that when he projected backwards, he got some confidence. He said, oh, well, you know, I look okay. I've, I've gotten this to match history. Um, many of us would argue that are skeptics that these models were artificially tweaked to try to make that occur. But anyway, he got it to match history, and, and so he was fairly confident. He said, look, I've got a model, and this is what... Because of our CO2, this is what's going to happen to temperatures. But in fact, this is what actually happened to temperatures. Temperatures have grossly underperformed, been below James Hansen's forecast. In fact, they're almost a full degree below where he predicted they would be at this time. It shouldn't be surprising, though, that this forecast overstates it because we already know that the positive feedback assumptions within this forecast don't make any sense. And so all these catastrophic forecasts you see are built on this shaky foundation of massive f positive feedbacks for which we have absolutely no evidence. In fact, we have historical evidence that would tell us that they're not true. And so when somebody tells you that the science is settled, you can't stop there. The science is fairly settled that CO2 is a greenhouse gas. It is not settled how much that greenhouse gas contributes to warming. In fact, it's fairly settled that it contributes only a small bit to warming. A and to really believe that that urgent action is needed to avert catastrophic warming shown in these climate models, you have to believe a second theory that is not settled science. That the world is dominated by positive feedback, a, a, an assumption that simply makes no sense. So will man-made warming be substantial? We might get a degree of warming from CO2 at most over the next century, but certainly not these catastrophic forecasts.